Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this serves as a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. I find your arm break in Rock and Michelle. Or Jay Z and Beyonce. Who is you? I'm Neil. And I'm Nyambi. And this is episode 358, y'all. Hey. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. How y'all doing? We hanging. It's the week of things taken. Hopefully, you know, the majority of us have some sh- amended weekends. I know not all of us. Some of us are essential workers and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're going to be there regardless. But I know there's a few of us who are counting down to Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. For thanks taking. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rate and view on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher and follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters. That's Black One. Okay. What's going on, baby? Oh, can you believe we at Thanks Taken already? Are we going to do an episode for Thanks Taken? We might. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> it depends how we going to feel. We need a day off. You you need a day off. Mm-hmm. I'm okay, I think. Nero keep projecting on me. He's like, are you taking off next week? I was like, no, I don't think I am. My my direct manager's taking off next week. And my um peer counterpart, he's still out on leave. So I'm like, no, I think I'm going to hang around. But I do think I'm going to take some time in January off. And you like. You ain't falling for it. Mm-mm. You can take some days off. I'm gonna be off fr- um, Friday and Saturday. I mean Thursday and Friday, and probably half day Wednesday. Mm. I'm gonna look at my meetings on Wednesday. So all the, I know there's some people who probably put meetings Wednesday just because they're reoccurring. Mm-hmm. And I like to get people to out to be like, do you want to do this or would you like to do this email or would you like to do this 15 minutes? How would you like to do this? Because mm-hmm. that's when people start wanting to do 8 a.m. meetings. <laughs> anyway, um, my check in. Y'all be proud of me. I got out the house. I went to my vision appointment. I call, I've been calling it eye appointment, vision appointment. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was nice. Um, y'all know that's not something I do. I almost didn't. But I know with my insurance, it covers, like, of course, like the eye exam and stuff, but also a nice chunk of money when it comes to glasses. Um, and for those who know me, know I love a nice pair of glasses so much that people be like, huh. I have, I switch my glasses so much now. People ask me at least every other day how many glasses I own. Do it look that? And do are my glasses that different now? Nyambi has more glasses than a bishop what? on green leaf. <laughs> I think that's what that was Nyambi's inspiration. I, it was. He got me back. Well, I said my glasses can match every outfit. It can match every mood and energy. And I've just been on that lately. To not having realized, like be in rooms with people and like especially being virtual. And I guess I come on the screen. I guess you can see my glasses a little bit more. And people are like. Did you do something different? Is this look same do rag? I don't know what you do, <laughs> but it'd be my glasses, and are they all different, Nero? Yes. How would you say they're all different? What's they, your favorite? All of them are different. Mm-hmm. What's the Miami different? Miami got clear ones. She got black ones. She got oversized ones. She got skinny ones. She got wireless. She got framed. <laughs> No name, all the names, mm-hmm. gaudy names. She got Gucci. She, she got said- Chloe. She got Fred. She got Sam. She got- who is Sam? <laughs> exactly. No name. <laughs> Just cute. <laughs> um, and so I went and got my eye appointment, uh, my vision appointment, and I bought two pairs of frames. One pair of frame. I'm actually getting away from like more of the traditional name brand. So I got a pair. Of, I think they're like. Um, some oversight y'all know actually y'all know what they are y'all know them old school um oversight christian dior glasses mm. think of something like your mama where they put me almost in the mind of like a gazelle mm-hmm. um but like a thick plastic gazelle um so i got some of those and then i don't actually don't know the name of this brand but how would you describe those near with the black and the gold it was oh. like circles with square you know that one you know that? yeah i got the one you wanted that was the one you like that was the second one i like oh. and then the First one I showed you, I got that one too. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That brown one. When mm-hmm. I called you on the um, FaceTime, what you thought? Because Nero may come. And I called him. I was like, what you think? Mm, when I was okay. putting them on, you're like, ooh. Well, you know, Niami, another thing that Niami like to do, Niami less like to take the uh, sunglass frames and oh, wear yeah. them as regular glasses. That That's a secret, y'all. That is a hot tip. That is a um, Niambi nugget. Whenever you're going to go buy glasses at the glasses place, especially, okay, let's just get real, real. Say if you can't necessarily afford to buy the most expensive frame, you can't go to the designer section, you can't buy your cardies, you can't buy your buffs. If you want to get the same impact, just go in the sunglass section and put regular glasses in there. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, I don't know about y'all, I got a big face. And, you know, some of them glasses be fitting um, thin angle sats and faces. And it don't work for me. And I need something bigger that, that just fits my place. And sunglasses always look better. So I usually go just buy sunglasses and have them pop out them dark lenses and put in my um, old progressive lenses. Mm. And it just works better. And low-key, high-key, they cheaper. Mm. 
the um my the sunglasses even name brand sunglasses are cheaper than reading air quote glasses Mm -hmm. and i don't know why (laughs) i have no idea why but the sunglasses are even cheaper. Like my name brand, the your ones, mm-hmm. those were cheaper than like the pseudo non name brand ones. Mm-hmm. Because the other ones I got were regular glasses. Like they're our glasses, right? Mm-hmm. Reading glasses. And the Christian Dior ones I got were just Christian Dior sunglasses. I'm making glasses. Mm-hmm. And they were cheap. They were probably almost like $100 cheaper. Interesting. And I've been noticing that. I was like, oh, I should just go up in here and buy sunglasses. I think it might be just like the pink tats. Mm-hmm. You know, like say razor. Y'all know about the pink tats that things that are marketed towards women are more expensive than men. Yeah. So, for example, razors. Don't get me wrong; it is levels to razors. But if they all five blade, right? If all everything else stands the same, like so, same blade, it could be p- pivoted, all that good stuff. The they'll market one for women that's pink. It'll be ten ninety nine, and they'll market that same razor for men, five blade pivot head whatever it is, but it's black mm-hmm. and it'd be like eight ninety nine. Yep. I think it's the same thing with glasses. It gotta be. Sunglasses. Because I even cause it surprised me like which cause that was the one I was like, I don't know if I want to pay them a little few hundred dollars extra for you know, I'm thinking it's gonna be the name brand sunglasses that but like this ain't in the budget, honey, mm-hmm. right? You know, I know I we dinks, double income, no kids, but ain't nobody just throwing out money to throw out money. We still got a budget. And I looked at the budget, I said, Oh, it's the other glasses? <laughs> Wait a minute. Go ahead and put them in the bed though. <laughs> <laughs> um so i did that um and got some okay news from my um optometrist i actually need to go do some follow-up tests so i need to see um what's going on for that nothing to worry though about y'all i'll keep y'all up to date though all that to being said what did i be said a couple weeks ago go get your appointments if you ain't if i ain't wouldn't get my eye appointment like i'm supposed to i wouldn't know i need to go see a specialist now would i mm-hmm so I know I ain't the only one who gonna be sent to some specialists. Mm. So who else need to go see their doctor so they can be sent to the specialist? Who else need that blood drawn? Who else need that realization that your cholesterol a little bit too high? Mm. Who else need the re- realization that's time to clip your toe? When's the last time y'all clipped your toenails? <laughs> I was just having this conversation. When's la- have you clipped your toenails since March? <laughs> Are they starting to curve under and become? Clip your toenails. You gotta go to the podiatrist. It's just certain things you gotta do. Why are you laughing at me like that? <laughs> Because we, we, Naomi having these conversations with people. It's like Naomi just realizing when she looked down, ooh. ooh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I said, for what? Ooh. For scratching over these goddamn claws. I scratched my own oh, self. So. <laughs> I said, oh. It just needed a little smooth edge. I just needed a little in reward to it, you know, because it's different. Pre COVID, we had different upkeeps. Don't get me wrong; I'm not going over here looking like little hobbit feet, right? You know, mm-hmm. not that, right? But it's not as pretty as it normally could and should be. Mm-hmm. Um, Nets jingle freaking jangles. I love the blackness of it all, y'all. Go watch this with your babies. Jingle jangles is on Netflix. It is a black Christmas movie show run by david e talib talbert felicia rashad is in it forrest whitaker in it um aniki anna rose i get it right the first time Mm -hmm. i can't believe it fraud princess she up in there and it's a bunch of new people who bond oh also key keegan key jordan peele yeah key Mm -hmm. i always got to say the whole thing michael key Key. i always got to say both of them to figure out who it's like the twins tia tamara Mm -hmm. i got to say them both and then pause and think about who i want to talk about (laughs) Keegan and Key is same thing. What Key and Peel is the same thing. So Key and that, mm-hmm. not Peel. Right. But Key growing on me. Remember I used to tease Key about two years ago? Because it's an alignment with whiteness. Mm-hmm. He's coming over. I like him. <laughs> We're good now. Y'all good. <laughs> before we wasn't. Before me and Key, me and Key wasn't good before. But we real good. Like he is sincerely growing on me. I thought he did an excellent job. But y'all, Jingle Jangle should be on repeat in your household. From now until the end of the year. It should. Just for black joy, just for black storytelling, just for black folklore. And oh, Nyambi got some folklore for you, so stay tuned. But it was just so good. I knew I was going to like the movie when the main character name was, uh, Ger- what is Geronicus. Geronicus Jangle. As soon as I heard Felicia Rashad say Geronicus Jangle without pausing one time, 
Like I did. Just Man, need j- 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 Jerry? J- I'm like the woman who tried to get on. Hey, Jerry. Jerome. Jerome. Jeronicus. I said, oh, this is my type of Negro film <laughs> right here. Just, just, it was the Jeronicus for me. <laughs> it was the fashions for me. <laughs> it was the colorful outfits for me. Mm-hmm. It was the 4C hair for me. It was the sh- glistening 4C hair for me. It was the black skin for me. It was the Afro beats dancing for me. It was the Negro spiritual and the song influence for me. It was the James Brown influence for me. It was the black girl magic doing math in the air for me. It was lifelong lessons about niggas stealing for me. <laughs> it was the Ricky Martin playing the Dow for me. <laughs> What was it for you, Nero? What the lifelong oh, lessons of niggas God. stealing your shit. <laughs> for all the new listeners, I'll tell you my Christmas story when Christmas oh comes God. up. It's always a lifelong lesson about niggas stealing your shit. Ne- J- Jericho. Uh, I'm going to call Jericho. <laughs> Jeronicus Jangles is Nero's ancestor. <laughs> <laughs> and Journey is Nero's great, 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 great grandmother. <laughs> The way let Nerum tell the story. <laughs> but it was just so beautiful. If you have brown, ba- this is all brown and black babies. So this is Latino, Asian, mitten, any any brown baby. Ebenezer Scrooge um, is beginning to look like white Christmas. Them raggedy ass Gumby. What's those movies they bring out? And, and, and uh, something, what is it called? Them, Claymations. They, Claymation, a Christmas ain't got shit. Mary Poppins ain't got shit on Jingle Jangles. Okay? Say it again for those in the back. Ain't got shit on Jingle Jangles. Scrooge can never. Scrooge can never be. Um, was Geronicus. Ger- Geronicus. We thought Scrooge was hurt. Tried stealing from a black man. <laughs> we thought Scrooge got visited by the three ghosts. <laughs> Jeronicus got real life visiting him. Estranged daughters, dead wives, partners in crime stealing, surprised granddaughter showing up. Scrooge, who? Scrooge, who? Rudolph the Red Nose no- Reindeer. Who? They doing math. The square root of impossible is possibly me. We serve an inspiration. Mm-hmm. Nero said he only went to calculus. He ain't know what they were talking about. Man, when they start doing sine and cosine, <laughs> I said, I didn't get to that path. <laughs> you did get to sine and cosine and mm. inverse and then the exponents and to the to the um exponentials and all that. You ain't remember that? Maybe I had to go a little further because I did science. I, I think you had went a little bit further. I, all of it sound familiar. Now, don't ask me to do it. But it sound, I can't agree this is a term that's real. It is real. Uh, you know, I think the highest I went was calculus and statistics. We start getting Statistics into, is different. I know. Than just math, like I pure know. math, air quote. I argue, I, I actually prefer statistics. You know, I think, truthfully, did I skip calculus and did trigonometry instead? I One think you them. do. I think calculus is after trig. Well, how would you gonna do calculus before trig? Mm. I don't think you can do that. Or you yeah, just did advanced algebra. Probably. Who knows? I just know them <laughs> niggas started Maybe doing. Maybe you got the pre-calc. You mm-hmm. know, it was a pre-calc class. Look, they start doing <laughs> shit that's on that TI eighty five calculator. The niggas when ain't you gotta, never used. When you got to hit the control alt, yes, then hit it for the second function. Yeah, you got to hold the control alt. Man, for the second <laughs> functions. <laughs> You ain't get to the second function. Shout out to all the niggas who was using the second fun- functions on the TI-85. Shout out to math. Jingle Jangles is for you. Shout out to physicists. Physics, we used a lot of the sine, cosine, and all that uh, because of like the trig and geometry comes right. back into physics. Physics is a little bit more logical to me than pure math. Pure math, you a different breed if you find joy in pre-math. Like, pure math. Any of y'all listen, if y'all babies find joy in just doing pure math, Air quote, pure math, just solving math, prop made up shit. They special. Get them all the help they deserve. Like, right. I think physics is hard. All of that's hard. Help but physics is just a lot more. Niggas build time machines. Geez. Physics is just a lot more logical to me, though. Like, it just, physics feels like it just serves, solves real world problems. Where math is like, they create, they're trying to solve math problems on Mars. And it's just like, why? 
But it's brilliant, though. No, what you talking about? They building theoretical time machines. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like it's just so much beyond. I think that's. I actually did really well in physics because it just made sense. It's like, oh, I need to see how fast I can jump off this building and see who's gonna get to the bottom first because we gotta take into consideration gravity. That made sense to me because you know that's the that's the nigga in me. Like, oh yeah, that made sense. But you know, you could do some of that pure math and you'd be like. Tell me again why I would like to do a theoretical time machine, what, on the Saturn rings, but when I was a baby. Like, you know, math, pure math be a whole, a theoretical math. Mm-hmm. Listen, if you're talking about a sexy major, ain't nobody never know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> sure don't. <laughs> but I, shout out to Jingle Jacobs. Did you enjoy it? I did. It was a nice little cute movie. I love the blackness of the names. Say the name one more time for me, Nero. Dronicus. Geronicus. That needs to be a universal name for all black babies around the world. No longer is Ebenezer. How can I say Ebenezer? We're having trouble with Geronicus. Mm-hmm. White supremacy. Yep. That's why. Also, right. How can you say Galfinacus? Galfinacus. Mm-hmm. That took a while. Mm-hmm. But yeah. But you can't say hey, Geronicus. White supremacy. Don't, they ain't gonna get me no more though. But please have y'all babies watch it. It's amazing. Also, uh, on a flip note, if you're also on Netflix, go watch His House. It's scary as hell. I won't give no spoiler alerts, but Parasite who? <laughs> <laughs> if all who know, y'all know Parasite won the movie year, and I'm glad they did because I was sick of seeing white people and I'm glad the Asian people won it. But his house is scary as hell. So if you look, it's scary as hell. You know, I like, I like all types of horror, but I like horror that really feel like it can happen. Mm-hmm. And the way that I'm connected to the ancestors and the source, this could happen. <laughs> So y'all go check out his house. It got Ruby in there. Y'all know Ruby from Lovecraft Country? Mm -hmm. She up in there. And she playing the fuck out of it. Just a little play. That's for the grown-ups. So don't let the children watch that. The children at least got to be 13 and older to watch it, I would say. I will say younger, but as Bernie Matt say, the kid's soft now. So I would say at least have them 13 and older. But also, I want to go back to this jingle jangle on folklore. Shout out to my good friend, Nia. Y'all know about Nia. We actually probably gonna get him on an episode for the end of this year. He done, y'all know I'm reading all my black folklores and I got something. He sent me something in the mail. You know that other book I wanted? Her stories, African-American folk tales, fairy tales, and true tales told by Virginia Hamilton with illustration by Leo and Diane Dillon. He got it for me and it brought me joy. Mm-hmm. To read about our history, y'all, is so important. Like, just the beauty of folklore and who we are and having stories passed down to, down to us just means so much. Near, I'm sure, I was teasing Niram. I said I was going to read a folklore for y'all want to hear a folklore. Go ahead and tell them some folklore. Baby. N- no, Niram was not this excited. When no. I first told him I was going to read it, he was like, no one wants Nyambi's reading rainbow story time with Nyambi. Don't hit Nyambi. Don't let me but take that d- But away. don't pretend like you was on board. I was on board. I asked you which one you was going to read. I tried to read them out loud to Nero, and Nero fell asleep. Listen here. How did, what happened then, Nero? Nine, I be <laughs> always trying to do shit when it's bedtime. <laughs> what do you mean? She always wanted deep ass conversations, all this other stuff. Read me long ass stories when it's bedtime. When we're sitting on the couch <laughs> at fucking noon, you ain't got shit to say to me. But when it's eleven o'clock and I already fell asleep on the couch, now I'm uh, I'm stumbling to the bed. Here comes you. Let me read a story to you. Well, shit. Let me go to bed. <laughs> I said, Nira, I'm not reading you a bedtime to go to sleep. Shit. Was my voice soothing or was you tired? Which what what was I, happening? Both. Did you dream about this? I hope not. What did? You- <laughs> both. But Nyambi always want to near him. Go to bed. You sleep, honey. And they yeah. come in here. Wake up. I want I want to talk to you about something. Like, damn. <laughs> it can't wait till the morning. No. The morning ain't promised. Shit, you can do it at noon? The morning ain't promised. Well, I got to get to you now. All right, y'all. I'm going to read this one. And if y'all like it, I can continue to read other folklores. I can't read them weekly because I want y'all to go buy this sister book. But maybe once a week, I can read a different folklore. Because I got two folklore, black folklore, African-American. Let me clear the fuck up. Fuck folklore books because i think folklore is a way of us telling our history and passing it down um and i think the ancestors have wisdom hid up in there too what you think i'm also been thinking about um i'm gonna talk about this a little bit later but nia also done inspired me i remember a while back i was reading the slave narratives but i didn't get through it but i almost want to go back and read through them slave narratives because that's the ancestors telling the truth mm-hmm. and then share some of my favorite excerpts from the slave narratives okay is this too much maybe black history month Okay, or Kwanzaa. Or Kwanzaa. Well, that's soon, though. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to reread it. I ain't versed now. Oh, okay. I, I, I remember some of the stories, but I ain't versed in them. 
And you know, sometimes when you read the slave narratives, I have to read it a few times mm-hmm. to make sure um, I understand what they're saying yeah. because of the dialect. All right, we're going to read this real quick, y'all. Go ahead, read it, really. Buckle in. The kids can't read it, but just let you know, this might be a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> the kids can listen, but this might be a scary one. <laughs> The name of this story, y'all. Okay. Do I have a good voice? Is this yeah. a good cadence now? Mm-hmm. Or should I go back up where I was? No, there you go. Right here? Should I turn your, you want me to turn up some bass? You want some bass or some travel? I, I'm not sure. Yeah, Which right. one would be better? Yeah. I don't know the difference. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of bass. Go ahead. Okay. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Can you hear a difference? Okay, good. Do I sound like one of those YouTubers? Do I sound like BookTube? Yeah. You know, do y'all listen to Halise from the internet, um, YouTube? I love her voice. And she just talks like this. And yeah. you know, the people who do voiceovers. And I think my voice is too piercing for that. But let's well, get into that's it. That's why I'm adding you a little low. That's why I'm also oh. and y'all know I'm also trying to learn so to talk slower too. You hear? You hear yeah. it? Yeah. Oh is that me? Yeah. I, my I, God. I didn't get you a little low. I'm about to be a voiceover actor. Well, there you go. I'll add you a little low to you. Okay. So I'm gonna read y'all. The kids can listen to it, but you might have to have a little debrief after. Um the, nasa, the name of this story is Macy in the Blue Hag. <clears throat> Shut up, Nero. Nero threw me off. I'm a little nervous. Okay. I can't get sleep to come to bed to me no more. If and when I do drop off, it don't feel very natural. I dream that every morning crows come into my pea patch and takes every single pea away in his beak. I can see my eats leaving the house with nobody's hands touching them. I see my poor mother. She's so restless in her grave. I see so many things like that. There won't be any snoring good with Boo Hag all the time riding me. I was a youngin the first time Boo Hag rode me. I suspect some jealous girl put the hag up to it. Some young women didn't like the young men come to court me because I was pretty and she wasn't nothing much to herself. One boy she liked cared for me best. And so this girl put the hag on me. One evening, Boo Hag came to see me. I was ready for bed early for I was younger then. halfway up the stairs. This green light comes swoosh and burst all in my eyes. Then it turns into a red light. I can see this awful raggedy looking thing coming up the stairs behind me. The she thing has a big head as big as a barrel with bloody red light shining her out of her eyes. My mouth is open to scream, but I can't yell a thing. I moan some. It's all I can do. And my dear mother heard me. She came over to the landing, said to me, Macy, what's wrong? What's the matter? I tried to answer, but something had locked my jaw. Couldn't even turn around to hear, to look at her. She knew there was something the matter with me. Must have played with them bad girls again, she said. Couldn't say nothing back to her. My mouth was just so closed. That's the boo hag. That's what she did to me. She made me speechless. And the hag rode me and I like to die. I got real thin. She rode me so many nights, just like I was someone broomstick. She rode or some skinny nightmare, a whole mouth of nights. And I couldn't sleep a wink. That's how hag did me. And she scared me so. And in the night riding, I see all kinds of bad things. See the devil, see boo daddy too. And come the day clean, I'm so sore on my back, like somebody been beating me with a stick. My mother said to me, Macy, I have a mind the hag is riding you. Even though you can't say, I got a way to fix the hag. Break her spell so she stay fits too. You go to sleep now, Macy. And when you wake up, you will feel real better for true. Well, I did as my mother said. She gave me a potion and I slept sound. But it seemed I could hear and see my mother besides me where she stayed all night. And before the cock crowed, mother saw me stir and saw me heave as the hag got ready to ride me. My mother took up this bottle with a cork in it, sat there beside her foot. She took the cork out the bottle. She held the cork while she put the bottle mouth down on my stomach. Then mother found some needles. 
She counted 33, not one more, not more less. She lift the bottle so quick, can't hardly see her hand. She threw the needle in the bottle fast as lightning. And she corked that bottle and put 32 needles in the cork. Then before Boo Hag knew what terrible trouble she was in. And the hag was clean gone and stayed gone as long as I didn't give the bottle away. And when I woke up the next day clean, there was my my nerve all back in me. The spell Boo had had over me had melted me off. Oh, did I eat some breakfast? Had me half a loaf of bread and a whole pot of gravy. For a long time, I was careful as could be. One time, an old woman wanted to borrow some salt, but I talked through the door, said, no, ma'am, we all out of salt here. I knew it was Boo Hag who come after me again, scared me to my bones. But you saw how mom, I saw how my mama caught that hag spirit in the bottle the way she knew how. You see, she pinned it down in the bottle with a needle. And in case that hag could tear loose, she put those needles through the cork. For it's known that Boo Hag can get past some sharp needles all lined up against her. And if I could give anything to have that to that hag voice on the other side of the door. Then she might try hard to get her spirit back out the bottle. Don't you know? And once she had and once she had hold of her spirit, Boo Hag could slip off her skin and fly all over the place too. Ride you just the shape of. Of her while her skin hang there behind the door. Tis true. But that's how my dear mother caught the boo hag. Yes, it is. Now mother is long gone in her gra- grave. And now boo hag comes back in my old age. I don't sleep so good these days. Nowadays, this people's generation don't know the tricks. And lack knowing the ways that my mother knew. Well, I know how to deal with some ghost. With some ghosts, you just throw a hard remark at them and they vanish. But I tell you, you never have um, some rest. You always worry about getting weak after the hag has ridden you. And I'm down so far these times. I'm feeling fearful and tired all of my days. I wish for my dear mother. I do. <laughs> I'll read the comment to you after y'all. So like there after the story, there's a comment and that summarizes the story. So. What the author says, this is a poignant tale of a South Carolina of South Carolina um, about a woman who fears the boo hag um, will bother her in her waning years. Tales about flying witches are worldwide. The modern version of the witch on a broomstick flying across the moon at Halloween is well known. Of course, the most famous flying witch was Mother Goose. <laughs> Shade. I didn't know Mother Goose was a fucking witch. What you, what you hell you thought that white woman came up with all those stories? Them ain't stories, them spells she cast. Oh my God. White women stay white women. Then. They colonize even in fairy tales. Um, some black tellers believe that Boo Hag is a disembodied spirit of a woman who practices witchcraft. Others say a boo hag is a more powerful than a common witch. They say hags are out of body spirits of mean, jealous, living people. In the story, Macy cannot scream because boo hag has the power to swallow her voice. Boo hag will stop to count every straw in the broom, every hole in a sleeve, and as many needles as can be placed in the cork of a bottle. By the time she finished, dawn will break to stop her wickedness, wickedness, wick, wickedness um, for she dare not be seen by the day of life. Um, and then they go on to talk about the person who um, submitted the stories. And the name of the person is Chalmer S. Murphy. And the collector of this, who he was from South Carolina from the Writers Project. That happened between 1935 and 1941. Um, the writer um, went across the world speaking of this. And they said, Macy and the Boo Hag was told by Mr. Murray, Mrs. Murray. Oh, Mr. Murray, a black um, man who said his wife knew of a hag that had ridden her and she was 79 years old when she told him the story, but her name wasn't recorded. Mm. How many of y'all got the hag riding you? Woo. Who got that boo hag on? Them? Oh my God. That boo hag Shit. make you sore when you wake up in the morning. That boo hag make you don't can't scream out. That boo hag make you can't eat, make you thin. Boo hag sound like stress to me. Mm. How many got that boo head stress riding you? Mm-hmm. Sometimes 
I think that boo hag over here on you. Sometimes that boo hag ride me, honey. Y'all know I don't tell the story about you know I we call, the white folks call it sleep paralysis, but I have had a dream where you just wake up screaming in the dream, but you can't scream out loud, baby. <laughs> sleep paralysis is real. Naomi got that boo hag on her. I don't got no boo hag rag on me. I'm gonna have to get me a broom put under my bed. Or I'm gonna have to give me that bottle with them needles so that boo head got to count it before she come on to me. Because the ancestors what? Told me. The ancestors told you. What the ancestors told me. Because the other ghosts, you just yell at them, they'll go away. But them boo hags, they got different intentions for you. Mm-hmm. Who got the boo hag intention on them? Mm-hmm. How y'all like them stories? Near, why are you quiet, Nero? Because I was looking at the picture. Is, is it too intense for you? No. What would you feel? Our poor child. Look, good night. Good night. <laughs> oh, you want to hear a a fairy tale? <laughs> Our poor child gonna go to kindergarten. They are gonna be reading stories. They be like, "Can you read Macy and the Boo Hag?" They gonna be like, "What?" what the hell? <laughs> That's my favorite one. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mother Goose is a witch. I, need I to always this knew shit. Mother Goose was a witch. As a black woman, deep down in my spirit, yeah, because Mother Goose rhymes and shit. All them rhymes about her doing that shit. Like she pretends she was telling stories. She wasn't telling stories. I'm a spell. She done cast. I'm alive. She done destroyed. Shut the fuck up. What? You ain't know it. Nope. They don't want you to know. Oh my God. The identity of Mother Goose, Goose and her, her nursery rhymes. rhymes. Her nursery rhymes are spells. Oh my God. Y'all didn't God. know that. Come this on. This bitch was a goose. The original witch. Come on. Do God. better. Damn it. But I keep going back to like just the power of our history and listening to our elders and like paying the mind, y'all. Like actually, um, after I read the story, me and Nia was even just talking about the power of our ancestors and making sure we do true true reading. And we got to talking about because y'all know once this COVID up, you know, we went through a high divorce season. You know what come after a high divorce season, a high wedding season. Um, and we said, here come here come the blacks again with their brooms again. And I was like, yeah, many people don't know about that, Nia. And we were saying, like, you know, I know a lot of times black people, we have embraced the tradition of jumping the broom. And I know it's in some of our literary greats that talk about it. But if you go back to the slave narrative, jumping the broom was not an African tradition. Jumping the broom was something that white colonizers um, and oppressors did for the people that they enslaved because they knew the power of what marriage was. Right. Not only the love there. Right. But the connection, the grace based covenant unto God. Right. Because all things. How does how does the line go? You know, marriage, let nothing under God break this apart. Right. You know, they allegedly believed in the Lord, too. Right. So, you know, that's powerful. If you give that to some black people Mm -hmm. back in the day. So they said, no, no, no. Y'all don't got to do no grace based covenant of God. Don't worry about that. Jump over this here broom. Mm -hmm. And make this this tradition. And um, Nia actually pointed it out to me when we were walking and I went and um, found it. And it was one of the narratives when they were asking about jumping the blue room. And the woman was like, yeah, 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 the tradition is like, she said master, but the person who enslaved them, who oppressed them, would give it to them as a gift. And then they would use it to like sweep out their house and like a good, um, like a good luck tucking and all that. And when her husband stopped, she, he was like, stop saying that. Like, that ain't true. Like, have you, those only stories you heard. Have you ever seen that? Like, mm-hmm. don't pass that down. Like, that's not what it was supposed to be. That's not our culture. That's not our, you know, he ain't said those words, but he was like, who you see get the broom? Mm-hmm. Who, who use it as a goodwill? Who, wh- where you see that at? Mm. So it's just, again, like, it's so important. And it's no shade to people who jump the broom. Jump the broom is your, is your wedding, is your day, is your life. Do whatever you want. You make it. up whatever tradition you, you, you want. You can make do. up whatever tradition you want to. Like, if that's the tradition you want to make up and do, do it. I'm just letting you know what the literature say because I stay in the reasons of bought one. <laughs> and this is a, one of the other reasons why it's so important for us to go to our primary sources who are our ancestors, mm-hmm. right? Who are our, and not even these books, right? Like in the, these books are written by black people. And then it's like recordings of slave. All oh, that's cool, cool, cool. But you also have stories and folklores and tales writing your own story. Mm-hmm. So as you are going into this holiday season, y'all shouldn't be around people, but it's a good time to get Nana on a zoom or on a three-way call and just ask them about some of these stories. Ask your Nana and your auntie, do they know anything about the boo hag? I'm sure every black folks got their own variation of the boo hag. Ask them about previous wedding traditions and all those things. Like ask them about that stuff. Just don't assume, just don't do because what people are doing, mm-hmm. right? Like start doing your reading, start um, asking questions, start listening um, and just start challenging that standard status quo, right? Like channel your inner Portia. Who said that? Who said that? Add the Nyambi sauce and why? <laughs> 
Who said that? And why? And why they say that? Because who said it got a lot to do with got going to inform my viewpoint. Mm-hmm. And why they said it going to do another layer of informing. So I just encourage you all to do that. Like I said, we're going to read some more folklore to your to y'all. Maybe not weekly. Maybe every other week, every couple of weeks. Because y'all should get your own. But I also encourage you, if y'all got some family folklore, email them in. Nyambi can read it. Or you can call in. Read us a little folklore tale. Some mm-hmm. fairy tales. True tales. That's I like this book too because it got some true tales. Mm-hmm. Maybe I bust out some of them slave narratives for Black History Month. And we can listen to the voices of our ancestors right. because it's power in that. And one thing I do know is that us as a black people did believe in channeling them ancestor. We surely did. I say. No. <laughs> no, um, and last but not speaking of the ancestors, speaking of a living legend, I'm excited to read Obama book. I'm literally going to read and or listen to his book. I'm promising myself within a week. I know it's like 30 hours. I'm going to find the 30 hours and I'm going to fangirl over Barack Obama because his interview with Oprah, his interview on MSNBC, Mm -hmm. Uncle Barack Obama, he is not, he is now uncle. And when I tell you he is spitting gems, when he is gem dropping, when he dropping Nyambi nuggets, when he's showing us how to be cool in the spite of colonization, when he teaching us what it is to walk in black excellence, I'm ready. He's given lessons. Like this is what I'm talking about when having mentors in your head. And I know we had a few episodes back or maybe even 20 when folks like I can't find a mentor. Sometimes you can't. You know who mentored me? Barack Obama in his 1200 page book. Mm, he said, I drink a little liquor. This is <laughs> I'm getting mentored by reading that book right now and literally taking the gems he's dropping at you. Like these are other ways of doing it. Near him teasing him because teasing him because I I knew he was an uncle when Oprah was like, "What you over there doing?" He said, "Maybe a little liquor." Why black people call it liquor? <laughs> a little liquor. We don't call it alcohol. Mm-mm, a little liquor. We do a little liquor. Just a little bit. Come on, but that's all I got. Y'all go read your, go read, listen to, and go rediscover and fall in love with our history because it's so beautiful. Shout out to Jingle Jangles. Give me one more time for the lead character. What's his name, Nero? Geronicus. Jeronicus Jangles. We named this episode in honor of him. Nero. I'm the real is it nigga in here. Yeah, you already no, know. No. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the other Jesus, black history. The other black history that went on. <laughs> that history of we like to call Gucci Mane versus Jeezy. AKA I'm the realest nigga in here. You already know. Big Snow versus Ice Cream Cone. Oh my God. Did y'all see that versus? I'm going to tell you one thing. The shit was intense. I was just holding my breath. I was holding my breath just as if. Do y'all remember when Barack Obama first got president and they stopped that limousine and he got out with Michelle Obama and started walking and I was holding my breath like, oh, my God, they're going to kill this man. That was the same way I was was holding my breath when Gucci Mane and Jeezy was on those two stages in those uh, thrones at Magic City. <laughs> I was holding my breath like, oh my God. I thought you was holding your breath because of Corona. No. I was <laughs> you know, holding my breath them. because I was like, oh my God, these niggas is going to kill each other. <laughs> Gucci was being a Gucci. <laughs> he was. Gucci was being old raggedy old. He was being old. What they say? Clone Gucci versus old Gucci. Mm-hmm. Why was Gucci being such a, um, I'm trying to think of an old school world. Old donkey. Oh, I'm gonna say boo hag. He be old Gucci in there being a boo hag. <laughs> He's stupid. He was being a boo hag. He hat. was doing something. Uh, uh, what is it? Jeezy had to get his broom. Oh my god! So he wouldn't jump, been riding him. Mm-hmm. What the fuck was going on? Yeah. Um, you know, I was so I don't even know where to start. Mm-hmm. First things first. When Gucci came with all those goddamn people, and barely none of them niggas had on masks, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh my god. I was like, who said all these people can come? Timberland, Swiss Beats, I'm looking at y'all. No, when Stacey Abrams got on that <gasps> on that TV screen <laughs> and Gucci Mane talking about, can you uh can you clear my okay. record? She said if I was the governor, I said, wait, <laughs> do not get her on the record for this shit. That's a governor's job. I am not. Um <laughs> so a, a couple other things, you know. I, I personally think uh Jeezy won. You know, people like to say that, uh, what they say, uh, Jeezy won Electoral College with Gucci Man won a popular vote. Yeah, I would say. I'll be <laughs> in line with that. The Electoral College, yes. Jeezy won the Electoral College, but um, Gucci won popular. I agree. 
So, you know, this is a beef of 20 years in the making. Mm -hmm. uh, on a couple podcasts ago, we read uh, the history. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the tough beef. Like, you know, Jesus. The, the true tales of Gucci Mane versus Jeezy. You know, and it was good to see them, you know, at least try to make some amends and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. um, but what I do think it was just very interesting is that, A, they didn't play all the things I was expecting them to play. Especially Gucci Mane. This yeah. nigga went... This nigga was so super disrespectful, mm -hmm. like super all the way through, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't sit down for ninety minutes, and he was just <laughs> maybe throwing he needs shots. To get his steps in. I don't know, or the other things like maybe he just needs to get it out, because it seemed like when uh, Jeezy was like, "Hey man, we're gonna do this," mm -hmm. and they did so uh, so icy. It looked like it was just a breath of fresh air, but it's like all before that. That's what I'm saying. I, was Gucci just playing a character? I don't know. Like, was he or was he pissed? And he was like, I'm gonna get this out. It might be a mixture of both. But you... I was like, was he just playing? Was he just gassing us? Was he just like auditioning for Real Housewives? I don't know. Like, is he auditioning for Mona Scott? What city is Gucci in? Atlanta? Yeah. Is he auditioning for Mona Scott mm -hmm. to get on Real? Because that, that was um, very love and hip hop behavior. It was, right. So he might be auditioning. But to the point where it made me uncomfortable. That's why I told your mom. That's why I remember I was telling y'all I didn't want to watch it live mm -hmm. because, like, I just didn't, I don't have the emotional bandwidth, like, for nigga shit. And, like, I know they have a lot of history and lives were lost, but it's just like, mm -mm, don't come on television with this. Like, I did not want to see no foolishness on my television. Mm -hmm. That could be prevented foolishness. Right. And that's why, that's why I didn't want to watch it. And I that's that tension. Like, I couldn't even enjoy photo shoot or Jeezy. Mm -hmm. Or I put on, I can't even enjoy that because right. I'm, every time Jeezy go in his coat, I got to make sure he ain't pulling out that, you know, mm -hmm. whatever he going to pull out in there. Yeah. Because... That's also how you know you grew up in the hood. Like, it felt like it was circle 2005 and you at the club, you at St. Andrews and you know you ain't supposed to be there and you got your eyes on the corner exits. You know a fight gonna bust out. Right. Because you, you know two people there that don't need to be there and you just waiting to get the signal when it's time to go. Right. Honestly, the, when Gucci told him to shut up this the Gucci Man show, I ding said, dong. Ding dong. Ding said, dong. Oh. No, when you started talking about dig your homeboy up and shit like that, I said, oh. Oh, my God. We going there. I was like, but also, aren't we too old? We are too old. I was like, you're too old to talk like this. But also, like, the maturity of Jeezy just to, like, let that slide. Let that slide. Yeah, Jeezy come off arrogant, too. I, I'm not the biggest fan of him, either. Um, But I'm glad he held back. Yeah. I'm glad he restrained. Like, it is, I think, one of the things with age I've learned is... Your power is like how you are able to control yourself. Yes. Uh, I, I don't even know if I'm sure if I said that right, but I, I don't think that's something that's often talked about. Um, as you get older, community. as you get older, it's so important for you to have self-restraint and self-discipline and knowing when to literally bite your tongue mm -hmm. compared to when it's popping off. And like, that's when, how I can tell a fool a mile away. Yeah. Like you can tell a fool a mile away. And I think that was one of the things that um, Jeezy was talking about, right? Because, uh, you know, he did a few interviews because, you know, his uh, album, his new album came out. Yeah, that was just um, okay. Yeah, it was. <laughs> was um, just, Gucci did say that, too. Like, some of the shots went bad. Like, saying, play some new shit. That's funny. Mm -hmm. That was funny to me. That was a funny shot. But, like, dig him dead, people, I don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. But we can talk about how Jeezy, Ju I'm sorry, Gucci do got a new song every six months. Mm -hmm. And it's popping. Jeezy... But you know, Jesus got the classics though. So do Gucci Man. I know. <laughs> um, but even that, right, that whole controlling yourself. And I think yeah. I was listening to either the Breakfast Club or a Hot Ninety Seven when, when Gucci Man was on there. And he's like, "So what you want me to do? Like go back twenty years? Like, hey, we was kids. Yeah. But also, yeah, like, stupid. You know, I'm in my forties now. So yeah. I'm gonna let this nigga say." What are you going to say? And it's going to fuck up all my business dealings, all my business relationships. Yeah. I got wife and kids at home. Yeah. And do all this other fuck shit. Yeah. For what? Yeah. Yes, I acknowledge that. And I think what rubs me wrong about Jeezy is he takes um, self-control, right, and restraint and responding. It takes the accountability out of it for me, right? Mm -hmm. So I felt for Gucci because, like, someone died. Right. And I've never heard out of Jeezy's mouth, I'm sorry that that happened. It was the wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. I wish it could have been different. That's what was missing for me for Jeezy. And mm -hmm. I think that's why it comes off cold to me. Yeah. And I think, like, both, everybody got work to do. But yeah. I think that's, 
how I can empathize with Gucci because he up on 10. Like, it's almost aggravating him more by, like, Jeezy acting like, I don't know, it's nothing. Like, it, they ain't run over his dog, right? Like, his people died. No, well, no, Jeezy people died. Jeezy people, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it's just like this, I don't know. It was just, I don't know. You know our boy, you know, we love and hate him. Charlamagne the guy, like, it, some therapy needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, some real healing. Like, I think we're at the point where, like, we really need to unpack those things that happen and truly get in touch with the emotions. I think Gucci is in touch with those emotions, but don't know how to go through them. Mm -hmm. But Jeezy put them emotions in a box and then put it under the tree. <laughs> it's going to open one day. Be careful, Jenny mine. Because <laughs> those, when that box open. But, you know, they say, Jeezy say he go to therapy. Oh, blessings. Because <laughs> he going to need it. <laughs> blessings. So, what y'all think? Who y'all think y'all want? You know, uh, send us a voicemail. 508 784 -1111. I'm the realest nigga in here. You already know. Jesus. When they bust out with that so icy at the end, that's why I was like, these niggas were pretending the whole time. Maybe they should have opened up with icy. Maybe. Can we talk about outfits? Okay. Gucci. Go ahead. Gucci one. Gucci one now. I mean, and I liked, and then the thing is, Jeezy had a classic all black, I'm assuming sable, fox to the ground, mm -hmm. mink maybe, that you could have did so much with that. And he did like a, what was it? Basketball jersey? No, he did one of those uh the the Ventures BMF jersey. And what he should have been in is literally an all black outfit. If you're gonna wear all black fur, you couple that with an all black outfit, and like Gucci say, then you put all your ice off. I think he drip. was. I think he was ready to fight just in case. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing. Jeezy actually came ready to fight. Gucci was way too tight up because Juicy got a, Gucci got all them niggas waiting on him. Gucci said, "I ain't fighting no. I ain't going back to jail. Nobody. I ain't going back to jail." <laughs> Gucci ain't going back to jail. Gucci said, I'm not going back to jail. But it did hurt my feelings with Jesus. Like, I don't do ice off. We could do a property off. I was like, ooh. I was like, Gucci, you go turn in one of them Rolexes and buy a house. <laughs> get your credit right. Get your <laughs> Bitch, get your mind right. You ain't got to get no credit. Just go take some, pawn some of that jewelry. <laughs> and go buy a house. Let me talk to him. Oh, my goodness. What else? But I enjoyed it. It was nice. It was cute. Mm -hmm. Did they make any announcements for the holidays? No. For Friday, ain't that the biggest club holiday of the year? Like, that's when they should have, they, that's when they should have did Jeezy Gucci. No. Um, For that Friday after Thanksgiving. Hopefully, they everybody being respons uh, responsible being at home. That's why I said they needed a versus Friday night. Mm -hmm. Instead of people going to the club, versus become the club. I'm waiting for versus to go ahead and do something stupid like charge us. Well, they already is. I'm, how? If you're an Apple user and you're on Apple Music. But you can get charged. it on other places, right? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I mean charges, charges. Oh, no. <laughs> they, they, we, we can charge in other ways. Okay. Like, we're They commodities. already got like a contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. With Apple. Hey, they got the contract with Apple. Apple ain't know what smoke they was getting into with this Jeezy Gucci man. No. Nope. I'm sure Apple CEO, all they illegal was hanging on the end. Look, what is about to pop off? Hey, they got a contract with Apple. Hey, they got a contract with Ciroc. I'm pretty sure they got replay rights. So That's probably going to go somewhere. I'm after this. You think they own the rights to verses? So we've been doing it for black culture. When are white people gonna steal it? So when are white people gonna do it? Mm -hmm. Pretty soon. I think pretty soon too. That's what made me nervous when I went to Apple that they gonna start doing verses with white people. Pretty soon. I so know. I wonder, do they own? I mean, I guess they don't gotta call it verses. They call, call it, it verses. Else. They call it something else. Mm. And still, Stay tuned for that one. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, they get money. Like I said, sponsor us a ride. They got Apple Music on there. Uh, I'm pretty sure there there's some type of money that Dylan's dealing with. Um, I ain't um, seen no Ciroc on this Apple one. No, I mean there. this last one. Oh, okay, it's you there. know, usually Puffy um, have it front and center. It was in those. The you latest see it was next to the no, next to the thrones. Oh, okay. Um, why everybody said why they sitting in them ghetto baby shower shit chairs? <laughs> Almost died. So funny. <laughs> those in all of y'all who don't had ghetto baby showers, if you had any of the type of those big thrones or arches. If you have any of that at your baby shower, it's ghetto. <laughs> oh, I, I love a ghetto baby shower. Don't I'm get me wrong. I'm a queen. Don't get me wrong. I love a ghetto baby shower. But if you have any thrones, if you got arches, them like over the top balloon, that's ghetto. You're not supposed to have those things. You're too what old for that. A fucking uh, table. You're supposed to have a plate. <laughs> <laughs> You put more money into fucking balloons and I'm eating off a paper plate? Yeah, bitch, that's ghetto. <laughs> and with that being said, if I am happy baby shower, I think I'm going to have to throw my own. <laughs> what I'm, what I'm you mean the, we're supposed to be a plate? I'm just Ceramic. Just, I'm fork. Metal. In here. That's what's supposed to be on there. You already know. Linen. 
the money you don't put in the chair and the balloon arches, you could have put to put linen <laughs> on the table. <laughs> on a linen cloth. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Any more questions? Any more clarifying questions? No, thank you. Glass. Where I put my champagne. Liquor, actually. Liquor. Went to a lot of dry ass baby showers. <laughs> Liquor. I'm Barack. <laughs> Where's the champagne? It's a celebration. We all ain't pregnant. Right. It's a celebration. <laughs> Get that bitch some cider. <laughs> Bitch, you can drink a little red wine. Can't Come you? on, <laughs> you that's the OGs. <laughs> so that's what that is the opposite mm-hmm. of ghetto baby. But I love a ghetto baby shower because usually they have like really good food. Yeah. Um, or, but, or somebody's drunk uncle that's gonna be because they're gonna sneak the food. They're gonna sneak the liquor in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the you didn't know the difference now. Have you ever been to a non ghetto baby shower? No. Well, you don't go to tons of baby showers though. So. I mean, I'm a boy from the east side of Detroit. Okay. No. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. This is your check-in. Continue. Yeah, well, as always, love it is ever evolving. Peace. Um, what else is going on? Other than that, you know, book proposal update. So I got through some sections. I didn't got through. Uh, the main section I'm working on now is the outline and the annotated uh, table of contents, which is like the hardest part. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, trying to been figure out. I'm not procrastinating. Oh, hey, you want to bulk base hey, his voice? Hell no. Y'all, he been talking about that same shit for two weeks. Do you want to see my ten pages? I don't. I'll show you I ten don't. pages because, of fucking outline because now. it's not a commitment you made to me. Okay then. <laughs> you don't like when I do that. Shit, it's not a commitment you made don't to you, me. So you can take as long as you want. Don't you fuck up my challenge, huh? Yo, who? <laughs> don't fucking don't you fuck up my shit. What? Uh, <laughs> You don't make make that boo hag must be on them. No, it ain't. It's on your ass. You don't okay. want to be screaming tonight. I'll show ah! I'll show I said, what the fuck? Come on, come on, come on. Uh, so, no, annotated table of context. It's the hardest part, I I would say, of the uh, book proposal. Mm-hmm. Because you're trying to take all the ideas and thoughts that you have in your head of what you want into this book. Yeah. And then putting it down in like a cold, uh, like a, what was it, concise. Yeah. Clean um, it up. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. That's so that's right. what I'm working on. Now. Hopefully, I'll have it done by the end of this week. What's I can up? move on to the stuff. The goal is to, I want to get this done before uh, before the end of December, so I can send it to the uh, to the literary agent, so she can start selling it. That's cool. So I've already sent her like bits and pieces of it. Like, hey, here's my marketing plan, which was like 30 pages long. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, here's author info. Here's um, the thing I found the most funnest was the what they call a competitive analysis or the market analysis mm-hmm. of finding out all the different books um, that's out there and then talking about how you go, how your book is going to be uh, better or different. Uh, I found that the most the most exciting part of it. But like now, really putting pen to paper, I'm like, all right, fuck this book going to be about, let me make this outline, let me like get all my thoughts down and then like try to make something that's co- uh, concise yeah, and, and tell them yeah. and sell it in a way of marketing terms to say, all right, this is what each chapter is going to be about. And like this, this is directly what the book is about. Mm-hmm. It's kind of hard. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up. Sending good energy. I'm just teasing you, but I see you sensitive about your shit. You're an artist. I'm an artist, goddammit. All right, yeah. Okay, Badu. Yeah. Go ahead. What we got for Pillow Talk? So, oh, ooh, y'all feel his energy change. Nigga. He Boo mad hat. at me. He mad at me. Boo hag ass. Jeronica's Jangles. <laughs> Come on, channel that energy. One of the greatest inventors ever lived. <laughs> I'm about to start talking about Jeronica's Jangles like he a real person. <laughs> I might slip down in conversation with some white people and see what they say. <laughs> and see if it throws them off a little bit. You know, because you know you have little icebreakers with your team. They're like, what's your favorite holiday book or your holiday tradition? And I was like, actually, Jeronica's Jangles is one of my favorites. <laughs> 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 I stay making them uncomfortable, I'm sure. <laughs> My uncle Geronicus. Geronicus Ger- Jangles. Um, anyway, shout out Friday. I want to give two shout outs. I want to give a good, I'm sorry, not shout out, pillow talk. Let's talk quickly about Tyler Perry and Nick Cannon. And I want to give them some huge shout outs. So TP, Tyler Perry, not to be mistaken for Teddy Pendergrass, um, has fed the people of Atlanta. He had lines wrapped around the corner this past weekend, giving out Thanksgiving dinner. He gave food to over 5,000 families with um, like care packages. So it was food that was already pre-made, Raw food, perishables, food for Thanksgiving and beyond, and gift cards so people can go to the store and then eat um, thereafter. So I think it was like grocery store gift cards mm-hmm. and then like also some gift cards um, to like the Targets, the Walmarts, so mm-hmm. they can buy their kids gifts. Yeah. Um, and Nick Cannon did a very similar thing in Compton. 
I know a lot of times, you know, we be giving TP a hard time. We be giving Nick Cannon a hard time. But also, just like we always stand, if we gon' um had a bat to beat the bitch down, we got to extend a hand to lift her up. And I just want to highlight this great work that these black men are doing yeah. because this is what we have to do for our communities. It makes me happy. It makes me smile. Mm-hmm. I hope that one day Black Love Matters can be a place where we are giving away support around the holidays, Kwanzaa, for scholarships, working jobs like that is always like that has been something I'm trying to manifest to see, you know, how can we, you know, take our podcast to the next level? Honestly, so we can just give back. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, we got nine to fives. We, you know, we'd be cool. But like, what could we do to elevate this podcast in a way that we can start giving more to our community? And that excites me. And then also being just at the head of that, right? Because it's power. Like other organizations, do they do this? Yes. But it is power that Tyler Perry and Nick Cannon are taking it about themselves. They get to run it, give it to who they want to, what they're getting from. Like it's power in that. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong. It's important to donate to charity so they then can help other people. Like th- that, that is the space I'm in where I just donate mm-hmm. to charities in hopes of them helping, you know, following through their mission and doing that. But it is power to when you are going directly to the people. And it's not getting caught up in red tape and bureaucracy bureaucracy and all that. So I just always love to see when we use our own dollars to help our own community. I know I know there's a little bit of a, you know, divide when it comes to help black capitalism, basically. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, some half of the table is saying that we cannot solve the problems of the community with just black capitalism because the only thing that's going to manifest is the same thing white people did for us. But it's just going to be black people doing it to us. Right. But other people are like, nah, 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 money helps. <laughs> So, you know, I think I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, so that just gives me joy. Any thoughts on that, Nero? No, I think you, you, you're talking that real shit. You know, definitely. I, I, I think that is a big word that we need to talk about later on. Yeah. Uh, about black, black capitalism versus black socialism yep. and, like, the different frames of thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what it really comes down to is capitalism is the king right now. So. Mm-hmm. You know, we can only play by the rules that the game is. Yeah, exactly. But mm-hmm. again, one of the gifts is a shout out. Share some black joy that I found from that. Some other win, some other good ass black news is y'all see the American Medical Association finally declares racism as a public health threat in a new policy. So this actually happened back in the summer and I don't know where I was. So back in June, 2020, probably under the bed because of COVID. <laughs> Um, the American Medical Association Board of Trustees acknowledged the health um, consequences of violent police interactions and denounced racism as an urgent threat to public health, pledging action to confront systematic raci- um, racism, ra- racial injustice, and police brutality. The new policy approved by the AMA, representing physicians and medical students from every state in medical specialty, opposes all forms of racism as a threat to public health and calls the AMA to take prescribed steps to combat racism, including one, acknowledging the harm caused caused by racism and unconscious bias within medical research and healthcare. Two, identifying tactics to counter racism and mitigate its health effects. Three, encouraging medical education curriculum to promote a greater understanding of the topics. And four, supporting external policy development and funding for research racism, uh, for researching racism's health risks and damages. And five, working to prevent influences of racism and bias in the health technology innovation. Um, board member um, Willard V. Edwards said the AMA recognized that racism negatively impacts the, and exacerbates health in inequalities among historically marginalized communities without systematic and structural level change health inequalities will continue to exist and the overall health of the nation will suffer shout out to the ama yeah fucking finally it's about damn time i'm glad i got this i actually got the whole report i'm gonna read this and i'm gonna bring this up whenever we try to solve racism at work <laughs> and i'm I- like oh this is a public health and I suggest y'all do the same thing. I'm like, this is a declared uh, public health threat for the United States. Maybe it's like where I can get some more sick days from this. Like, it's just, I'm happy. Let me not. I'm going left. Bring it back, Lord. <laughs> Bring it back. Bring it back. I'll be okay. I'm already trying to game the system. <laughs> Maybe I can get some more sick days. <laughs> Bring it back. I'm glad the AMA is it. This is a step in the right direction. Um, I actually was having a conversation. Um, I forgot the name of the podcast. It was like, things you got wrong or things you don't understand or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about, it's like, it's the framing of stuff. So you know how traditionally they'll say that there is a lack of trust in the African-American community when it comes to medical professionals. And that'd be the end of the sentence. Mm-hmm. 
but it's never addressed like hell yeah there's a lack of trust between the america black african americans and medical professionals not because of some shit african americans made up right. because of the bullshit that medical professionals did and and experimented on our black asses and gave us um Syphilis. Syphilis. It didn't tell us and told it and made us keep it for years and took our cells and created new shit and created that's the fuck why? Created new um um birthing methods using black women, uh, tested anesthesiology different anesthesiology methods on us without permission, right? Did surgeries on us without any type of pain medication. When we tell them we in pain now, they don't believe us. Mm -hmm. Black mamas is dying at higher rates because either the piss poor ass doctor or the piss poor ass nurse up in there don't believe us. Mm -hmm. This is why. So this is a huge acknowledgement from this community because they need to do some work. Yeah. Right. So before it's like, oh, we need to get the black community to come over. We need to get the black community to do this. And don't get me wrong. I know I was over here even telling y'all to go to the doctor. And it is important to go to the doctor. Don't don't get me fucked up. Go get that blood drawn. Go get them feet shaved down. <laughs> but I love how the American Medical Association is finally taking that mirror and looking at themselves mm -hmm. to say, what could we then do to make, you know, the medical profession more welcoming for African-Americans, black people, folks from underrepresented populations? So this, again, first step on paper, we have to see what they're truly going to do. But it is something to this. Um, and it, and it, it, br it brought me a slight bit of joy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What's your thoughts, Neil? No, this is definitely um, needed. It's definitely need to be celebrated. Yeah. Uh, I think all of us should be able to use this line whenever anybody at your job started talking about racism or talking about how res racism is, you know, some bullshit. Yeah. You can be like, by Actually, the way. the AMA declared racism <laughs> as a public health threat. Racism yes. is an issue. It's a public health threat. Yes. <laughs> Means Bitch. yours and mine. <laughs> Just like, you know what else a public health threat? COVID. Like, same thing. Right. <laughs> so, yes, like, it, it's, a, it's a step in the right spot. And, still you know, work to do. It, it's still a lot of work to do. I'm sad that all these black folks had to suffer in order to get this done in fucking 2020. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing I'm really just upset about. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho. So, y'all let them know my thoughts on that. Um, before we get out of here, I know we got some shout out on a Friday, but on a Monday, mm -hmm. um, that Fresh Prince reunion. Yeah. What's your thoughts on the near? I've been talking so much. What's your thoughts? <sighs> nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. The nostalgia. Let's start with the good stuff. Yeah. The nostalgia. The mm -hmm. There's bad stuff near. Yeah. There's always some bad it's stuff. It's some stuff we need to unpack. Just some stuff we need to unpack. Mm -hmm. Nobody is fucking aging except for a light skinned Aunt Viv. Don't say that. Everyone look good. Almost. <laughs> Except but I think I think we confuse her age. I mm -hmm. think she's a lot older than we think she is. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. Right. Like, I think she took this role older, and we because black, you know, is moisturized. She's older, so I think she does look fine for her age. Oh, okay. But there's some people on there who's not aging at all, though. Yes. Which is almost scary. I had to look in the mirror. <laughs> I said, "Wait, what is, is we the same age now? <laughs> Why are they the same age as me?" Uh, it was definitely a movement. Uh, I think it was it was definitely Will Smith driven. Yeah, of course. Uh, of course, it's a show. Of but course. Uh, I think it was just interesting, A, to see some of their audition tapes. Um, Fresh Prince was just a movement. Mm -hmm. I think that's the main thing, right? It influenced so much. Yeah. Like a culture. Even like how people dress now. That's you how can, they dressing, yeah. You can date that back to Fresh Prince. I mean, even Will Smith and Jazzy, sure. Jeff, I don't think they get enough props for their influence that they had on the hip-hop community. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong, I know Will Smith lost us when he went to Wild Wild West, and well, I'm going to Miami, I keep P.O. to Miami, whatever he said. Mm -hmm. um, he lost us a little there. But prior to that, when I tell you he was performing, um, him and Jazzy Jeff gave a lot to the community. Mm -hmm. um, especially Jazzy Jeff, I don't think he gets his flowers at all, but it was good to see them all. Yeah, you know, because he the goat. He the goat. Um, what was one of your favorite spots of it? What, what they went through? Um, like the whole yeah. Fresh Prince reunion. Yeah, I think I honestly enjoyed just the recreation of the set. Mm -hmm. Like, and really going back, I was like, "Oh, Will Smith money is long." They went and found all these ninety pieces. Like, mm -hmm. it was really, really um, good to see that, and also like seeing their audition tapes and where they came from and like who they were. Right? I thought it was interesting how they said they were a family, which is cute. Mm -hmm. But but it's like, 
I don't know. I'm gonna leave it alone. No, um, but I was like, you know, they keep speaking saying truth, Niams. they are family, and why do we take so long to get together? I'm like, y'all niggas are celebrities and rich. Why don't y'all just host a dinner? <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm feeling sorry. I ain't talk. Like, so none of y'all talked in 20 years. Damn, Will. <laughs> Will got big rich. Real got big celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> for somebody to be like a brother sister mother uncle to me i don't never so after the last like i feel like that's what they almost like will was the interviewer right mm -hmm. i feel like they needed someone external to be like damn y'all keep talking about family y'all acting like this is the first time y'all seen each other is it is it? listen to me is so is so y'all estranged or, mm -hmm. what type of fam because i know in a black community there is some estranging that happens mm -hmm. and why is that happening and why you know i would have said it mm -hmm. the black i v1 would have said it <laughs> So I always find that like that felt a little Hollywood to me. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one of my mm, y'all could have left the family shit but, or they should have been like on the set. It felt like a family. Mm -hmm. They did a lot of like, oh, we're always going to be a family. Mm. Mm. Not sure about that. Like y'all family is like when y'all seen Will was an entanglement. Y'all call him. I don't know. Did they? Family will call you and be like, so y'all up in the entanglements down there. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see his ass, that's all I can see. It's entanglements. Entanglements. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was good. Like I don't want to shit on it. It, it. It's great. Black. It was black excellence. It was black excellence on TV. I think I really loved Uncle Phil. Right, and you can tell his presence was there, but was missing. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, in spirit, of course, R.I.P. But you can tell, like, almost that grounding force was. Yeah, James Avery. Yeah, James Avery. Like something was missing. Um, from there, I could have went without Nikki. Um, aka buckwheat that's but buckwheat nikki and buckwheat the same person is that the same yes thing? wow you didn't know that i mean now that i say it they do yeah <laughs> <laughs> now that i picture them in my head i can see it <laughs> but i could have went without them mm -hmm. um i think one thing they didn't get to and i think like honestly and we can get to what will and jada conversation i wish they would have invited um janet into the conversation like after her and will like i love how they did the big group thing mm -hmm. then he was like we had a conversation with janet are you okay for janet to come i would have preferred if she just stayed yes the rest of the time because just as they were having other people reflect on their favorite memories i would love for aunt viv to reflect on her favorite memories and what it meant to her to be as a black woman because low-key when i think about my favorite memories of fresh prince of belair it was when aunt viv and like all her sisters would come together oh, sister. like you know it'd be like jennifer lewis i forgot that whole crew i'm seeing them like will's mom would come mm -hmm. like those would be and i don't think they did it with uh, uh V O V two. I don't think so. Like, but they did it with V one, and I just love. And this go back to the few episodes ago when we were talking about just the power of like sisterhood and black women. Like, whenever I seen that on television, I was like, I was basically drooling. Like, oh my god, I cannot wait till I am in like fellowship and just in my femininity and just in like my womanhood mm -hmm. to have connections like with women like that. Right? Like, it was just those were my favorite episodes, and I would love for her to unpack that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that was one of her favorite um, things. But she also talked about, you know, her legendary dance sequence. Yeah, yeah. but like back then, she was, she sings, she danced, she acted. She was the goat. Duh. Duh. She's a dark skinned woman in what the 90s on television. Of course, she had to be fucking Superwoman. Why would I expect anything else? Why? Her daughters is a one uh, light skinned girl and one girl half black and Indian. Like, what? How you put that together with Janet and James Avery? That don't come out. You missed that in the cop. That don't. That ain't what's coming out. What's coming out is Nyambi, and that ain't what I see. Don't get me wrong. I love Ashley. Love Hillary, but just being real, mm -hmm. that showed the. I, I, as y'all see, I stand for Jan. I, I like both on vids though. Like, you know, on vid two point She did what she could do. It's just like Family Matters, and they got rid of Harriet. Oh my god, she was like upstairs forever. Like, no, remember they run that light skinned woman on there for like an episode or two? Oh, shit. It was so strange. Now, who was that girl? Was that uh, uh, one person who never came back downstairs? Oh, did yeah, a daughter. The daughter. <laughs> She's that the one who's the gay stripper. This is how they, the black women are disposable. Like, this is what I'm talking about. You never see black men in television just disappear. And black men in television disappear. The whole series is canceled mm -hmm. where they don't replace the characters. But black women, they replace me with who? Child, I don't know who somebody else. They have like place me with Jenny Mai. They be like <laughs> fucking Raven Simone. They be like, how is they the same? <laughs> and 
then we just supposed to suspend disbelief <laughs> and be like, yeah, that's her now. That's what they do to black women. <laughs> well, but they don't do that to black men in television. But they do that to us mm-hmm. consistently. There are a few instances we can remember that shit. Yeah. Well, I guess we were talking about what Will Angelic conversation. It was overdue. It's hard to watch. It what do you think? What's your what's your viewpoint as a man? You know, I got my vote. I got my points. You want me to go first or what? Will fucked up. Yeah, he fucked up. He fucked up, and you can't unring a bell. And like this man, damn near destroyed her career. Yeah. Period. And I know a lot of the people are like, "Well, he was twenty one. What do you expect? He know he's a fucking businessman." What you mean? And Tyler Perry, why you ain't put Jen in one of these movies? Get Tyler, PP. Hello, Tyler. Um, this is my young becoming. I'm asking for a favor. Can we put Janet Hubert in a mute movie? She might not even want to act no more. Mm-hmm. Loki, we didn't even ask her. Like, uh, she might be the age where she's like, listen, sis, I'm good. But did the conversation, Will and Janet, I loved how p- apologies were exchanged. Both truth were heard, right? So Janet told Will how she felt, um, not only personally, but professionally, other things that were going on. Will said, like, how he felt and how he was just moving. And I love both of their vulnerability. And even when Janet was like, you know, I was going through a rough time in my life personally. And I take that being grown, like, I got these, I got a kid, I got a husband who's doing something he ain't probably supposed to be doing. I just want to come to work and do my fucking job. Meanwhile, on the ranch, Will Smith barbecuing, rattling, <laughs> having parties, parties and, shit. and shit being loud. And I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to not only do my job, Will, but also entertain his monkey ass. And like you say, he is a baby. This nigga only 21. Like, what the fuck? I don't got time to deal with that bullshit right now. Where there was no one on either side that came to both of them to be like, hey. How do we No, There was no compromising agents. I think that's what right. also threw me off about the family dynamic. Right. And I think Janet called that out. Like no one on the show said anything after. Right. Nothing. Cat, like, dog, mouse, cat nothing. dog, mouse, blue. Right. And that's why I call bullshit on that family shit. Because, you know, niggas was niggas was scared to lose their job. Right? right. Like that's all that was. But it was something to that. Right. Like, damn, you can't even talk to her to be like, damn, Jen, that's fucked up. I'm about to go to this table reading. But once I'm done with this table reading, I'm going to call you. Mm-hmm. None of because that. sometimes you just really just want people to come. Like, I don't see Jen as a decide to be like, bitch, you better quit too. Look, I ain't going to lose my job, but I'll talk to him. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think being up front to ask them is that, are they okay yeah, with like, that? Are you okay? Just, are you okay? Are you eating? Right. So I, but again, the black, one, like it, it's just reoccurring themes. And, um, but also like to Will shared his vulnerability when he was like, he felt like everyone was against him. So like, that's the argument I use when everyone like, well, he was young, he didn't know what to do. He knew what the fuck he was doing. He just decided to play the game. Mm-hmm. That's all, he knew what he was doing. He just decided to do safe thing and play the game because the flip side, the Fresh Prince was canceled because Will didn't want to move forward. Not because the network canceled it. Mm-hmm. And then once Will fell off, Everybody else fell in line too. Mm, tell the tea now. I mean, you're, that you're, ain't you're no tea. It's just like I told you from the folklore. If you just simply read, oh, if you just simply read Ooh. why the show was canceled, Will walked away. Oh, it's on Wikipedia. <laughs> you silly. It's not only Wikipedia. He's actually done interviews Uh-oh. to say, like back in the day, where he was like, "Yeah, this is my last season. I don't want to do it." Da 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 da. And then everybody else just fell in line. Mm-hmm. So like that's real tea, tea. But. What did stick out to me of this was separating Will and Janet, right? I don't want us to over anchor on them. I love both of them. She looked good. I'm glad they healed. I think that was a tremendous amount of maturity. Um, I'm happy for them. I hope they move forward and through it. Paul, separate them out. Now let's bring the issue up and zoom it out. Make it more universal. Make it more generalized. Mm -hmm. How many men have destroyed black women's career by simply saying they were difficult? And like that, what has consistently been going in my head in and out. How many men have destroyed black women, particular's career by simply saying they're difficult to work with? By saying they're difficult to work with, they are now ousted. If they need to be promoted, they're not going to get it. If they need to get different um, projects on their boat, they ain't going to do it. If they need to lead initiatives, they're not going to do it because of those simple words. She's mm-hmm. def- they're difficult to work with. And then on the flip side, how many black women are waiting for apologies they're never going to get? God damn it. How many, me, y'all, whoever listening, how many of us are waiting on apologies we're never going to get? Janet waited 27 years for this never apology. Never going to get it. Never going to get it. And you never going to get that apology. Never going to get And like, that's what's, as I zoomed out, broader themes, seeing where I'm triggered, like those are the two things that came out to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you think about it, Nero? No, you speaking that truth right there. What? That's that truth right there, baby. But what do you think of it as a man? Is that 
Have you been in rooms where not you don't got telling yourself, honey? Um, but like, have you been in rooms where you seen men like basically destroy, like quietly destroy folks' career or just say things, especially for women or the way men talk? How do men talk about women when women aren't present in corporate settings? I think because I, I, I don't know because I ain't in there. I've, I've actually had an interesting career mm-hmm. because the only man that I really I don't say the Lord no, I mean, come on preach but that too what the Lord say <laughs> no but the only man I really worked for like when in my former years has been that one time when I had to go get those checks cashed <laughs> but like ah! he don't count he only a piece but of but like every every other like position I've been at like mm. White women has been mm, in, charge. in charge. So I even having black women. So it has been white women in charge. Gotcha. And I think being a black man with the white woman in charge, like that's a whole different narrative and space to move in. Because oh. I'm like, I'm constantly trying to make them comfortable in my stature. Gotcha. Being, it's the opposite yeah. for you. Mm-hmm. Got you. They can say it. White woman can destroy your career by saying you difficult to white. Exactly. White woman can destroy black man career by saying he's too aggressive. He's too assertive. He's too yeah. But right. it makes me feel dangerous. I agree. Same story. Different um, Same. side of the um, coin. Yeah. Interesting. But I think y'all don't be waiting on apologies like we do. <laughs> no. I think man is more likely to go on about their bullshit. Yeah. It's something to that. It's something deep rooted about it. Mm-hmm. What's y'all thoughts on it? I enjoyed it. It was good. I'm glad they did it. I thought we were gonna get like a real show though. Look, I'm a, look, I'm a, <laughs> I thought we were gonna do like a where are they now or like a you know how they doing all them shows where people are checking in via GV um via um Zoom and stuff. Mm-hmm. They did that for the Father of the Bride. Y'all know I love that white ass movie. Father of the Bride one and two. They did a Father of the Bride like um um check in when they um and they did it over um zoom and it was so good i would have loved if they started with something like that um like for the fresh prince and like they started as like a check-in and have like a like a recorded thing like 20 something like vignette or skit and have like we can't come home we can't do it oh my goodness i don't know what to do and they even could have did something funny with the aunt vibs and like aunt viv v2 could have been like oh i'll be right back y'all i'm gonna go to the bathroom and then she should come back and then it should be aunt viv v1 <laughs> and be like hey y'all i'm back and they're like ma is something different did you oh yeah yeah I just, i'm trying this new cream like that would have been funny yeah right and then had right like mm-hmm. that would have been a nice and then go into all this after yeah that would have been fine but yeah you know how i be i always be doing too much you got any other thoughts before we get into shout outs uh, no i think it was a good show um watch it though absolutely definitely worth watching it definitely watch but it. i wanted to separate that like this ain't all on will and janet backs and necks and all that i think those are just the two things that have stirred up for me um after watching it and reflecting on it yeah all right so we got some shout outs and then we got some voicemails um we gonna shout out on a friday but monday all right then let's get it going let's go you got it oh, yeah you know how hey y'all it's hey. Nigel. i am listening to episode 357 mm-hmm. and i had to stop because uh, Niram started singing. He was like, uh, mm-hmm. we're going on in Houston. And then you started talking about all them shootings. I, 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 let me stop you right there. It ain't got nothing to do with Houston, baby. Dallas. That was Dallas. You oh, right. Dallas. 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 Yeah, I meant to tell My you bad. that. Acting yeah. crazy. Okay. I Don't mean, put Houston. That on Houston. We got, a, we got our own shit. Yeah, we out here say, y'all got trying to stuff, fight um, <laughs> racism because we like our city, but the whites would prefer for us to stay red. Yeah. We ain't got time to be out here shooting and killing. Well, yeah, I take that back because it was I'll say they did like did seven shoot, deaths they? back yeah. to back. I'm like they did um, shoot up out there. Mm. My bad. My bad. <laughs> okay. But that, the Mo3 and all the mother in people, Dallas. The rappers was in Dallas. They didn't have nothing to do with Houston. Yeah. That was Dallas. Okay. Oh, That's all I had to say. Houston was just all right. All right, y'all. Have a good one. You right. Thank you for the correction, sis. Houston got that shit going on t- um, too. Um, I got a soft spot in Houston. I'll tell that story later. But the, yeah, it was Dallas with all the rapper stuff. But you know, all these communities got something going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get it mixed up. My bad. They like three hours away. Oh. Okay. Hey, y'all. Hey. It is Danny from White Ass, New England. Hey, and Danny. this is my first time calling in. Oh. Um, but I'm a long time listener. Yeah. And I White love you guys' England. podcast. So thank you for keeping it alive, especially during, you know, these times or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I'm sitting here listening to this. Oh, this stuff about goddamn <laughs> this is us and oh, i'm okay. with you Nyan. i am in because i signed up so many seasons ago and yeah. i'm like let me I'm just see what's about to happen with this yeah i'm right and i just can't wait for them to develop this 
black Randall mama situation because <laughs> it's about to be yeah. some shit if they kill oh. her too. Yeah, they killed her. They and he got to live through another discovering death. and all that two times. Mama. I just hope they don't kill her again. They are. Um, they are. But we're going to see. Um, and y'all. Baby Jack is not deaf. He's oh. blind. Y'all oh. know they got the whole see and, see and feel garage situation oh. set up with all the instruments so he could, you know, you talk about he blind. I, I can't guess hear. hear the music and feel the thing and blah, blah, blah. But right. Yeah, he's blind. He's oh. blind, blind, blind. All right. I love y'all. I'm going to keep listening. And uh, peace. Love is ever evolving. Look, look, we like them aunts and uncles. Oh, I thought he could me we don't walk around naked <laughs> wait a minute you right i'm sorry about that and also yeah anyway i'm about to go on a whole tangent with randall they about to kill randall living through the deaths of two daddies i would say three daddy deaths because white daddy died because of slow cooker black daddy died once when he didn't know he was still living so he already <laughs> thought he was, he was dead. dead and then black daddy died again when he had the little stomach when he got the cancer in real life. In real life. Mm -hmm. And now we got white mama who gonna die. And then he already thought black mama was dead. But she coming back. But she gonna die again. Randall living through a lot of death. Yes, he is. That's why he gotta run. That's <laughs> <laughs> a stress relief, honey. You gotta get it out. This brother. Hey. It's Candace. Hey. From the Metro DC area. I love this. I probably have not called this damn number in two years. <laughs> I am Welcome driving back. out in the middle of the night yeah. to go ahead and handle some business. Yes. Uh -oh. I'm listening to, to Naomi Ooh. talk about these thirty minute collard greens <laughs> on um with the instant pot. It's true. Yes, sis. I did that yes. and they come out fucking fantastic. Yes, I do. And I've also cooked dried beans yes. in twenty minutes. What? What? All the time. I make black bean quesadillas yes. and all that shit. <laughs> but what made me want to call is the fact that you're talking about this pork and this turkey and shit that you put into the collard greens. Yeah. Reminding me of when Miram was vegan, vegan curious. Yes. You just threw that shit to the wind, huh, bro? Yeah. <laughs> you eat all the meat. <laughs> you mean your fuck. I ain't mad at you, though. It's hard. I thought about it, but... It you was. ain't make it, so I know I ain't gonna do this. <laughs> oh, so many things to say. Oh, I, I miss the Nanny Chronicles. Oh, I miss the Box Chronicles. Yes. I miss all that shit. But the one podcast that y'all never bring up is what? the one with that big ass spider. I don't know what fucking oh. episode that is, but that shit had me rolling. Oh I was God, walking down the, the block. Place. I had to stop to laugh. I could not keep walking <laughs> when I was listening to Miriam Tyler about that goddamn spider. Oh, he was a tarantula. One of the funniest moments ever. Please let me know where it um, I don't know. was. I, I want to go back and listen. I gotta find anyway, it. I love y'all. I'm sorry I haven't called or no emailed in forever. No it's been we still here. so much shit going on, but I love y'all. Yeah. We love you too. Keep doing you. Thank you. Bye. Y'all, I don't know for the new listeners, it was probably in the early, it had to be in our first hundred episodes. What'd you say, Nero? It had to be. And what we were recording, we used to record the podcast in our living room. In our living room, we had like, we lived in a condo, so our living room, our dining room and living room was all in one area and it was like a fireplace. We was in White Ass New England, so it stayed hot. And was the weather changing or we just got it clean? And we were recording the podcast and you remember that spider? No. Crawl? You don't remember? No, I don't. You don't remember that big ass tarantula, that spider crawled from the um fireplace and up on the mantle and then you was trying to kill it then that nigga get the scaring finger and... <laughs> that sounds familiar it was terrifying i know exactly what the... it took my breath away i couldn't even continue here i was like oh okay i'll kill it after i said oh nigga we can't kill this after it, <laughs> it was so big you needed a gun to kill it it was huge <laughs> it was huge like and i wear glasses and we on the other side of the room and i seen every eight leg i could count them <laughs> I said, oh, he got to go. He was about as big as Summer. a softball. Mm -hmm. He was huge. <laughs> I said, how long that nigga been living here? <laughs> he been living here longer than us rent free. <laughs> I was terrible. Oh, my, that's sending me chills. Y'all like, thought I was playing. I sent chills. I, I don't like spiders. Oh, I do remember. Oh, I don't like spiders. Because we, I kept it, kept it rolling. You talking about cut it off? No, yeah, because Nero, I'll be back. And then Nero, <laughs> sneaky ass. He said he was gonna edit that shit out. 
I listened to the podcast next day. Ain't nothing edited. Did you do that on purpose? Yes. Or you forgot? No, I did that shit on purpose. And I done turned on the podcast. Keep it raw, man. He got me on there screaming and cussing him out. Because <laughs> he trying to, I don't know, he trying to get a jar and put him. I said, no, kill that nigga. Oh, shit. He got to die. He ain't, that's when we talked about my house and the spider house. My house is indoors. His house is outside. Once he come in here, it's death. I'm like the white people with guns and second amendments. <laughs> Once you come in my house, it's my rules and you aren't allowed in here. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't mess with insects and bugs when they outside. I ain't the one to kill a bug. I just see him outside. But he in my house. I'm recording. I done been at the box store all day. Baby. Ooh, I hate a spider. Mm-mm-mm. All right. You going to close this down here? Yeah, as always, submit your Black Love story. Go to blacklovematters.com to submit a question for Kitchen Table Talk. Shoot us an email, blacklovematters at gmail.com. Remember, that's black with no K. And to leave a comment about anything we talked about, head on over to that website. We got that SoundCloud. We got that voicemail. And that's at 508-784-1111. Once again, that's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.